you know, look, I've been reading this paper because i got to stay, to, this is, i got a headache trying to stay on course, so just let me go off this paper for a minute. Uh, before y'all start calling my radio show and DMing me, talking about why you ain't asked so hard, hitting questions, that ain't what this is. I'm throwing a lob. This is the Hollywood for a dunk. Because this administration needs to get the word out of what they're actually doing and what they're actually accomplishing so we can stop all this foolishness about what you're doing for black people. Can't nobody come out with no agenda and call it this for black people and expect to get in the White House. You got to play the game different. Y'all know what this is. So now this next question is another lob for her to dunk. Because they've done, done a lot, man. We, we, see, I'm on this radio show and I'm hearing all these people talking about I'm not voting if they're not doing nothing for us. Listen to me. If you do not vote, the analytics will show they know how many women vote, how many, they know the age you are when you vote. If we don't vote, how are we going to ask for something next time? If you ain't got no voting power, you talk about reparations. Ain't nobody going to give you no reparations and you don't vote. Well, you think they can give us some money? No, how, man. I hope they do. They owe us. I go down there. I'm sorry. In an 8-to-1 ruling, the Oklahoma State Supreme Court upheld the decision made by a Tulsa district judge last year. That ruling said the Tulsa race massacre survivors' grievances, although legitimate, did not qualify for reparations. If they were going to do reparation the easy way, it would have already been done. Our partner station in Tulsa spoke with Willie Sells, owner of T's Barbershop, the longest standing business on Black Wall Street since its rebirth. Those people that were here suffered a terrible loss and I think it's affected the city down through the years. It's estimated up to 300 black Tolsons were killed and over 30 blocks of the city were devastated by a white mob in 1921. The few living survivors sued the city of Tulsa and others in 2020 seeking reparations for the trauma they lived through. The city and insurance companies never compensated victims for their losses and the massacre ultimately resulted in racial and economic disparities that still exist today day, the lawsuit argued. We're hoping and trusting and praying that uh, the city, the state, or somebody in Oklahoma would give reparation to those survivors. Welcome back to Breakdown Friday. Joseph Ward, Patrick Irvin, Professor Carl Tone Jones. Here again uh, on this reparations conversation. So if you haven't been in certain spaces online within the last week you probably don't know what's going on but you know now because just in the clip at the beginning but steve harvey has gone viral within uh a lot of spaces on social media for his comments of basically saying no votes no reparations and stop expecting something for your vote and that's a conversation there without those are statements steve harvey made in a conversation with kamala harris um that was aired and you know it set the internet on fire steve steve was trending for a while you know with the mustache and so i just thought it was interesting you know once again like i know a lot of people think because I, I i i see the comments a lot of people think we're anti-democrat now we're just anti-bullshit and it don't matter who it's coming from but it's another attempt by, you know, the Democrats to secure votes. Um, you know, all in all, you know, our message is vote the issues, vote for the people that make the best sense for you, that, that give you the best outcome. Uh, don't just vote for somebody because your emotions are being peeled to or that's the wave that everybody else is voting. Vote for the for, vote for the person that make the best sense for you in your community. But uh, I, I do think it's the stuff that was coming out of Steve Harvey's mouth. And he felt like he was saying something to black people. Uh, we're not, basically, we're not supposed to get anything for our vote. And we're not supposed to expect somebody to 
have the black people's best interest and have that as their platform and be out in the open with it as their platform to get voted in. Of course, you know, he's talking to Kamala Harris, who when uh, the Biden administration was running in 2020, she said that she wasn't going to do anything specific for black people. and Black people still voted them in. The, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole in the country. So what are we doing? So I'm going to start with you, Pat. Hey, man, you heard the clip. And then it was followed by the uh, some of the, I guess, descendants or survivors of the Tulsa race <laughs> massacre who did not get the reparations that they were going for. So what are your thoughts on both clips and just, like the the state of the reparations conversation now um as i've gotten older uh, and you know we've been having this reparations conversation for decades damn near a century probably yeah. actually it's been longer than a century um for me the conversation shifts to utility First, realism, then utility. Realism, I don't believe reparations is ever going to come. And if they do come, it's going to be such a way that they aren't going to serve any real utility. Mm -hmm. I think the history of what we've learned for the way America does business with people that is wrong, particularly black people that is wrong, has showcased us that. I think that our uh, so the whole conversation for me just becomes the exercise and in intellectual masturbation, um, which is fine. Every once in a while, you got to rub one out. Uh, but you know, if we if we trying to have a deep, meaningful discussion, and somebody brings up reparation, well, the deep and the meaningful just evacuated the premises for me. So um, as far as what he said, the only thing he said that I agree with is that, you know, you, you do got to play the game the way it's played. Black people, until we become an aggregate voter block that can't be predetermined to vote a certain way, there aren't going to be any legislation, legislative actions, or any politicians specifically with platforms for black people because they already know black people are going to vote Democratic. Mm -hmm. So what? why? Why even bother? Um, and with that being said, you know, you you so you approach it from that angle, but the other angle for me is why are we still looking for a candidate to show up and give us something when we should be working to create candidates and create policy that any candidate can endorse. We like we so if his assertion elsewhere in the clip was that you shouldn't expect anything for your vote, well, I strongly disagree with that. Like that's whole that's the that defeats the whole purpose of voting. The yeah. whole point of the system is that you get something for your vote. Your vote is your political currency. So if you're telling me to just ex to spend my political currency for nothing, well, then, like, I, well you shouldn't be a yeah. part of the conversation. And so, he's saying that specifically to black people, remember, as well. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's my, like, Kamala Harris is a politician. And I, now one thing I can't appreciate is him saying, addressing up front, these are softball questions. Yeah. yeah. I can always appreciate somebody stating their intentions. Yeah. So now we don't have to get bogged down in the conversation about his intentions. He made it clear. All right, we can clear that hurdle. Let's get to the meat of it. Well, hey, <laughs> PC, you know, um, it, it, this is funny. This is funny to me. Steve Harvey once again flexing this um uh, I guess his his mustache and his comedic muscles, but also hits, I guess, influence, as you would say. Um, because you seen the suit, man. That means he's important, so you gotta listen to him. And he mm -hmm. wrote books, 
He told women to think like a man, so you got to listen to him. But his comments, no rep, no votes, no reparations. What are you getting for your vote? Why are you worry about what you're getting for your vote? Vote anyway, because if you don't vote, you're not going to have a voice. And if you don't have a voice, you can't get reparations. What are your thoughts on that as well as uh, the information that was in the clip with the Tulsa rights? Um, yeah, that's it. No, I'm, um, <laughs> I, you know, black people, Malcolm X said a few things. One thing he said is that we should not have entertainers doing our bidding in political arenas. People ain't listening. People ain't listening. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that you got Steve Harvey, an entertainer, interjecting you know into politics as a you know when you do that you make yourself a pseudo leader of the community right and so because he's not going to do anything that challenges you know the status quo he's going to be publicized he's going to be pushed by other entities that you know his lack thereof of a message serves so and, but you know this is similar to um, Hillary Clinton going to the Breakfast Club and talking about having hot sauce in her purse. You know what I'm saying? Um, or showing up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, dancing the jig with Roland Martin. This is you know nobody really respects black people politically because we're political chumps, and because of that, you get this you know chitlin circuit of politicians going around to these. Um, entertainers and trying to espouse upon their uh, what they're not going to do for black people and what they don't have to do for black people. And that's why you can have a comedian there because he can make jokes about the fact that they're not going to do shit for us. Um, and they're not going to ask them to do anything for us. Uh, I was going to say something about because you said come out of his mouth. I was going to make an off color comment, but I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be more reserves, reserved. About things because I could have went there. That was a real good opening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, didn't he tell Monique a few years ago that she has to play the game? Mm -hmm. You know that you know the, the, that she has to swallow her pride. And now I'm gonna go there. What have you been swallowing, Steve? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. So, and, and it's to, to the point where. <sighs> Man, I just don't care about these dudes, man. <laughs> I don't, man. Steve, stick to stick to the strawberry letters. Stick to all that. Like, and I feel like because this is the shut up and dribble. Like yes. when we said that to LeBron and James, LeBron James, you know, it was racially motivated, but it did have some credence to it because this ain't your lane. You know, and you, if you want to be an activist for something, which at, with entertainers can be, that's one thing. But to think you have, you want to determine policy, you don't have enough. Gus, you you have not done enough study research. You have not spent enough time in that arena to do that, and it's dangerous. Yeah. Because black people are like children when it comes to politics. Emotional. I mean, po political chumps that operate from a place of emotional bullies. So no matter what facts you put in front of these Negroes, the thing is, emotionally speaking, they cannot get over the fact that they're terrified of white folk and what they will and how they will be empowered if Donald Trump wins the election. But so, so this is what we hear. This is what this is so when you start talking, black, you know, black people need to be honest about something. He is cool and, and all this other stuff about how, you know, um, they're not scared of nobody. Black people are terrified of white people, especially when white folk get mad. You know what I'm saying? And we've all had conversations, even on this, on this, um, on this show, about how black people, when white folk get mad, black people get terrified. They go out of their way to start trying to calm them down. I've seen black people cover and protect white supremacists at rallies when they were attacking black people. You know what I'm saying? So you get back to this, this whole concept of um the notion of our votes this and the other. 
voting is only one small aspect of being of of being part of the political process. In fact, in many cases, if you're not organized, it's the least valuable thing you can do. Because your vote doesn't matter unless it's aggregated. And so because black people want to be ruggedly individual and can't it, well, therefore, what is the purpose of your vote? And then you all uh, um, fall under this thing where you, you, you know, you don't take the time out to learn politics, policy, so forth. You don't take the time out to understand the civic process of government. And therefore, you don't understand the process, the pro the, um, the the how the process of how lobbies work and you don't understand how money means more than votes but if you don't have the money the least you can do is aggregate aggregate your votes and then maybe if we all put a dollar together maybe we can have a critical thinking tank a tank a think tank that will discuss the <coughs> issues that black people need black people are just jumping on this reparations train and while we deserve reparations I'll never say we don't you cannot get reparations unless you have an ability to leverage somebody. 